Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 66 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. <clears throat> That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. <coughs> And you can hop on over there and pick your kid up. And believe me, my life and your life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And I'm going to introduce you to a new component, and that is the capacitive touch sensor. And how this sensor works is just like it's described. It detects whether you are touching or not touching the sensor and it turns out to be a very effective way to get input from the user. <clears throat> Now already we've learned to use toggle switches and push button switches and on off switches, but this is a different type of switch and it's one that I really like to use in projects. So I hope you enjoy this new sensor. So enough of this introductory talk, let me move out of your way. <clears throat> And then let me switch over to our overhead view. And what I will need you to do is get in your kit and get out and find the capacitive sensor. The sensor is about an inch on a side and you can see it has this little bullseye pattern. Now, how does the sensor work? It is going to detect whether you are touching the sensor or not. If you are touching the sensor, it's going to read a one. If you're not touching the sensor, it is going to read a zero. Now, how does it work? <clears throat> it's basically a capacitor, capacitor electrodes in here. And as you bring your finger in, it detects the capacitance of your finger. And from that, it detects whether it has been touched or not. So it's a pretty neat little device. The other good thing is <clears throat> it is really easy to set up. You can see that there are three pins and the pins are labeled SIG for signal, VCC, and ground. Okay, so I took the leftmost pin, that is the signal pin, and I brought it over to the GPIO pin 17. Now that's pin 17 in the BCM numbering system, but the nice thing is if you're using this breakout board, it is labeled in the BCM system, and so you just bring that wire directly into pin 17, that leftmost lead. Now the center pin is labeled VCC. We bring that over to 3.3 volts and then the <clears throat> The rightmost pin is labeled ground and we bring that into ground. So at this point, this sensor is hooked up. So that is pretty easy. That's why I didn't draw you a schematic because it's really not too much that can go wrong there. That's not a challenge because I know some of you can always find a way to make things go wrong. But I think even the most beginner of you guys should be able to hook that up. Okay, let's switch over and let's fire up Thonny. <clears throat> I will use this view where you can see Thonny and you can see a live view of what's going on here at the same time. And this is actually pretty easy to get programmed up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import rp little i dot gpio <clears throat> as gpio. And the case is important. Be very uh, cap uh, careful with your capitalization there. <clears throat> uppercase RP, lowercase I, and then uppercase GPIO. Then we're going to need a delay, so we're going to also going to put in here import time. <coughs> now we're going to do a GPIO.set mode, and we are going to do a GPIO.BCM, telling it that we are using the BCM numbering scheme on the pins. Now that touch pin, we're going to set that up. <clears throat> the pin that I hooked the SIG pin up to was BCM pin 17. Okay, now we are going to come over here. Give me just a second. We are going to come over here 
And now we're gonna set that pin up. We're gonna do a gpio.setup and we are gonna be reading from it. So the touch pin is going to be a gpio.in like that. <clears throat> okay. Now what we will do is we will create an infinite loop while true, when is true, true, true is always true. And what are we gonna do? We're just gonna read the but state, okay? I guess I'm not gonna call that but state because that's not a button, that is a, uh, what, <clears throat> what would I call that? Just a sensor state, sin state, like that sin state for the sensor state is gpio.input. We're gonna read from it, read from what the touch pin, like that. So now we've got a reading, now let's print out that reading. <clears throat> send state like that let's print it out and then let's do a little delay of about 0.1 seconds like that okay so what's it going to do it's going to read whether i'm touching it then it's going to print whether i'm touching it and then it is going to have a slight delay and so i will need everyone to hold their breath as i get ready to run this Okay, look at that. It's printing a zero. Good news because I am not touching it. How many people are touching it? Zero. Well, really, it's just no. No one is touching it. A, a non-touch. Okay. Let's see what I touch. What happens when I touch it? So I come down and giddy up. Look at that. A one. Take the finger off zero. Come down one. And you see, this is really working well. And I'm not seeing any bounce in this at all. I mean, this is just really, really working very, very cleanly. <clears throat> and I'll be honest with you guys, I really like using this type of, of sensor or this type of device for user input a lot more than a push button that you have to press or a switch that you have to flip. I just love putting this little thing in there because it's a very easy and very reliable way to get input from the user. I wonder if I use a stylus whether it'll detect it. Nope. Why? It's not a finger. Let's see if I do that. <clears throat> Let me just see a couple of other things. It seems like it really, ooh, it, it saw the back of the pencil. Okay. I guess it can see a few things doesn't see the front of the pencil, but it does see kind of the eraser end of the pencil. But most things it doesn't see, it really kind of wants to see a finger on there. And it, you don't have to press hard. All you got to do is just touch it. All you got to do is just barely touch it, but you do have to touch it. I'm trying to come in really close, <clears throat> but it doesn't switch till I actually touch it. Okay, guys, this seems like a really quick and really easy lesson, but this is something we're going to be using as we move forward. And so that part of it, hooking up the sensor and reading from it is really pretty easy. But now I'm going to give you a homework assignment that you're actually going to have to think about a little bit more. And I will demonstrate that homework for you here. I went ahead and what I did is you can see over here, <clears throat> you can see over here that I have uh, just one second. Okay, you can see over here that I've hooked up an RGB LED and I've got three 220 ohm current limiting resistors. I'm coming over to the GPIO pins, and this is what your homework assignment is. Your homework assignment is, is that if you come in and just touch the sensor, then you want the LED to turn red. If you come in and you touch it again, <clears throat> you want it to go to green. If you come in and touch it again, you want it to go to blue. And if you come in and touch it again, you want it to go off. And so you're toggling through the different states. I just go red, green, blue, off. Okay. Red, green, blue, off. Because I want you guys to be thinking through these problems <clears throat> of how to get input from the user. Now it's pretty easy to do the LED part of it, but just thinking about how to keep track of things with the sensor, that is going to take a little bit of thought. Okay, guys, this has been a quick lesson, but I think it's been a pretty neat one. And then next week, what I'll do is I'll show you my solution to the homework assignment. What I need you guys to do is I need you to do your homework <clears throat> 
I need you to post it to YouTube, and then when you post it to YouTube, leave a link back to this lesson, and then down in the comments below, link over to your homework solutions. And I do look at every single homework solution that you guys post and try to leave a comment on it. Okay, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you enjoyed the lesson, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, and it always helps us with the old YouTube juice if you will leave a comment down below. And most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people working on engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will see you guys next week. Bye.